everybody. Uh, I hope that you are doing well. I'm ex super excited to read all of your proposals. Um, this video is just the um, audio visual version of the slide share, which is itself a more broken down version of the assignment sheet. So without further ado, congratulations. Uh, if you're reading this, it's because the Rose Foundation for Social Justice has that approved all of your project proposals and awarded you all of the funding that you asked for to produce your climate change websites. So the websites that you're going to build are just like I was talking to you about in my responses to your proposal, uh, going to address some sort of information, misinformation about the environmental topic that you chose by providing audiences with, with podcasts, infographics, feature articles, and glossaries. Uh, in addition, everybody's going to have a splash page, standard navigation and design, team bios, and a references section. So you're going to not only identify your target audience and then persuade them that a failure of public uh, communication exacerbates the problem you outline, but you're also going to provide them with these like sets of specific solutions with an eye toward a participatory approach to risk communication cut somewhat short by the pandemic, but we'll do our best. Okay. First progress report is due October 30th. Second progress report is due November 13th. Then we'll talk about this, but on the 16th and the 18th of November, those are our two uh, touch point face-to-face -face optional uh, class periods where I would like for you to do a very informal demo. It can be all the members of the group uh, or fewer. Uh, we can do them, like I said, face-to-face -face during your regular scheduled hours. Uh, obviously half the class in one day, half the class in the other day, depending on how many people want to go, or I'm happy to do it totally remotely, but live and in person, uh, live uh, on a, we can use blue jeans. Uh, on the 23rd, you will upload your project to Canvas, and then our final, final assignment for the semester is going to be a UX report that you will turn in on the 7th. It's also collaborative, and I'll have that assignment out a little bit later. Um... All of the progress reports, like I said, you'll need to do that, uh, are going to be collaborative. Um, they're just going to briefly tell me how much you've completed, what's in progress, what uh, remains to be finished, if you have any technical workflow or uh, content management issues, uh, and then just your feelings about how things are progressing uh, in general. And so those will be posted the uh, week that they're due, and you'll just upload them. <clears throat> in a form of your choice or a tool of your choice to uh, Canvas. Uh, for this project, if we were face-to-face, -face, we would be doing this for live clients, um, but obviously we can't do that. Um, or Anyway, um, so I, this week, am going to have you fill out a worksheet uh, where you uh, determine your own target audience. I feel like that um, having a sense of an audience that you generated for yourself will make targeting that audience easier over the course of the project. Okay, tools. WordPress um, is fine. My suggestion would be if you have a domain, do, um, excuse me, the .org WordPress so you're not stuck with like um, kind of trashy flash advertisement running through your website, but it's up to you. Um, but you do, if you use the, the free writer, you need a, um, a domain to map it onto. Uh, Wix and Weebly, I think you have to pay for it. I can't remember. Do they have a free package? It's up to you um, if you want to pay for it, if you want to use their free uh, writers, if they still have them. Um, you're welcome to. Uh, what are the others? Like Squarespace. Like GoDaddy has a writer now too, right? Um, or since most of you guys are um, got a lot of talent, you are welcome to build uh, your site from scratch. Um, so I would like for every web, um, site to have a splasher homepage that like hits in a couple of sentences, the overall goal of the site, the problem you identify and your solutions. You should also give us a few sentences, um, of overview of the site itself and what the user can expect. I would like consistent navigation, um, throughout, obviously if I'm on a page, I need to be able to get off it. Uh, Etc. Uh, an aesthetic that corresponds to both the principles of visual design that we will be going over and over, uh, and usability, um, as well as the site content. Right. So make sure that like 
I don't know if you're talking about um, industrial meat farming uh, that you don't have a website filled with like little cartoon animals, right? You don't want the, uh, you want like, for example, the iconography to be as serious as the subject, right? Um, or like, don't use a, uh, like a, a, a WordPress wedding book template to talk about like nuclear waste disposal. Um, do your best to embed, um, files when possible. Uh, the MP3 you might have to link out to though. So, but, uh, that's it. Um, this is good. Uh, beyond those specifics, I don't have any, um, hard design requirements. Um, I like this web, this website's a good example, um, of a template that you might think about, right? So, uh, double top navigation. Um, it's a parallax scroll homepage that uses a kind of what featured content, um, layout as well as, um, what was I going to say? Yeah. Uh, I, 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 like featured content and magazine kind of layout. So, um, obviously you won't have to organize this much content, but it has a nice, uh, hardy footer. Um, and I can move, um, uh, through this website, um, pretty easily. I mean, another thing I would say about this website and couple, and other ones is it does a good job thinking about its, um, audience, right? So there are different levels of audiences that this thing accommodates, both the casual but informed reader interested in, I guess, duck stamp art, for example, and then also people who are like slightly more hardcore uh, birders. Um, another thing that you might think about too, obviously we can't do this, but you might want to be able to, you, you're welcome to suggest it, um, are ways in which um, certain types of uh, applications are themselves participatory. So, you know, Audubon uh, places a big emphasis on citizen science, um, up to and including asking, uh, you know, citizens to go out and count birds um, over the course of the year. So, good example of the type of website that might be helpful for you. Okay, so in addition to navigation, design, and a uh, touchdown page, I would like for you to make a podcast. Um, if you are having workflow challenges, you are welcome to produce individual podcasts. Uh, if you are not beset by those challenges, please produce a five to seven minute, uh, in a genre of your choice. We'll talk more about this next week, but I'm quite familiar enough with podcasts to know that there are, uh, you know, like fan podcasts and, uh, what, uh, investigative journalism ones, ones that are more narrative, ones that are informative with, um, like data and interviews. Um, I would like for everybody to include an expert guest. Um, if you cannot find, uh, an expert guest, uh, you are welcome to have a group member perform that expert guest. And then I would like a couple of one to two authoritative or two authoritative sources, uh, uh, one of which your expert can count for, um, employ sound cues, music tracks, um, to signal intro, outro sound cues, um, and be sure that all members of the, um, podcast speak for, you know, two ish minutes, uh, if possible, embed the podcast, um, or you can link it out. Here's a good example of what that page might look like taken from, um, the WOAC Science Friday website that is itself a nice good looking podcast page. But for the most part, you know, any website that's going to host, uh, podcasts or live streams, it has some tiling, um, and then a little kind of pricey or overview of what to expect in the, um, in the podcast itself and then linked out to uh, the other sites that host the podcast. But again, embed it if you can or if you want, or you can send us out to um, whatever you're using to host the podcast.
All right, I would like an infographic. Um, take the information from the objectives section or the context and background section of your, well, sometimes objectives of your proposal and then graph it. Uh, in addition, demonstrate visually ways in which your solution that you propose responds to like the, the data background content, et cetera, that you illustrate. So it's one example of a way that you could do it. Um, let's see. It should be at least six blocks long if you're going to write a, um, a vertical. Um, two to three key visual features. Um, you're welcome to use a template, but it should be at least 60% different from the template and color, layout, imager, et cetera. Um, be great if you could uh, please embed this graphic in its own page, give it a little pricier introduction, and it should be accessible from every point on the site. Here's some examples. Um, so this Sierra Club graphic does a good job translating somewhat complicated information to a general audience, right? So they're making an argument that we're about to reach, um, a peak growth rate before uh, human population rate starts to decline. Um, and so, um, you know, it's a pretty like sturdy representation of um, this data. Uh, I would say, and we'll spend some time talking about this, um, that even though it gives us a sense of what, sorry, uh, a vertical block graphic can look like on a web page that it has some um, issues, right? Like, so uh, consider it an example that you might be able to improve on. For example, what sorts of transitions could you employ if you were to use um, that same sort of like descending um, example in your uh, website? Um, here's a horizontal uh, handout from the EPA, um, it's sort of an annotated um, central image, also a useful example. Um, really though, a jackpot of um, super successful graphics are on the JPL um, page at um, Caltech. So you can click into here for really just sky's the limit on super successful um, graphics that you're welcome to use as templates for the type of graphics that you build. Uh, I would like for you to include a featured story. Uh, so each member of uh, the web team is going to write um, a story about a key detail, person, place, animal, technology, fact, etc., that you uncovered over the, over the course of building the project, right? So um, pull out something that wouldn't otherwise have gotten a lot of attention, possibly, and then, um, you know, give us a exciting kind of lead into uh, an introduction, set the scene for us. Um, and then um, demonstrate to us the ways in which this small, otherwise unremarkable bit of information really like pulls into focus both the problem and the solution that you're articulating. Illustrate it, link out to um, different sources, um, and then make sure that it's accessible from different parts of the site. I'm sorry, I'm like obsessed with this part. Look how cool he is. Um, so here we are back at the Audubon site, but there's a million different publications that do this well. Um, but really, how many more reasons do you need to love liar birds? Uh, they move dirt and they keep forests healthy. So this is a bird you might not know anything else about. He's amazing. I'm here to tell you about how he's not only amazing, but should make you care more about, um, birds and forest conservation or whatever it is that you're, um, arguing. You can have a glossary. Um, you can read through the, spe the specs on the glossary, but one thing I will say about the glossary is feel free to incorporate the definitions that you did, um, at the start of the, um, of the semester. I think one thing to keep in mind though is typically glossaries are 
a kind of combination between formal and informal definitions, and will they include operational um, or can include operational definitions? The expanded definition is really only dependent on audience need, right? So, to what extent do you really do you need the I don't know the etymology of deforestation if you're making an argument about uh, land, like uh, ways in which like land use gets politicized to the detriment of like communities? So, anyway, um, if you're using WordPress, um, I feel like this. Um, Glossary Builder might be helpful for you. You can just click into it. Um, if not, you can just build it by hand. There might be other plugins for different websites. Uh, just keep recycling those team bios. Uh, it's up to you how you want to, if you want separate pages, if you want it on the touchdown page, etc. cetera. Uh, and then your references list. Here's um, Purdue Owl. Um, you... Should cite all of the in-text citation, right? So, like, anytime you quote from um, another source or include like verbatim information, um, go ahead and provide references for that. My suggestion for the images is if the images that you pull have authorial attribution, then include the author and the database, et cetera, in the references list. If you have like clip art or background chip colors, et cetera, that you have just pulled from databases, you can just cite the database. So um, remember from the beginning of the semester, um, just, you know, do no harm, be good digital citizens, but, um, you know, you can't find the author of the, I don't know, the bit of clip art that you used to make a button on one of the pages, then, you know, it's not a crisis. So, all right, that's it. This is a very long video. Thank you for paying attention, and I'm looking forward to your projects.